So in this video, I'm going to um, find the Taylor series for sine of 2x centered at 0 um, two ways. I'm going to find it by doing it from scratch, but then we're also going to do it by um, just uh, using a known Taylor series, um, a McLaren series, because it's centered at 0, and go from there. So first of all, I'll do it from scratch. So remember what we mean is by that is you're going to take you're going to evaluate the functions <coughs> at zero, or each order of the derivative at zero. So initially sine of zero is zero, um, but then we take the derivative. So that's oops. ah. And that would be a cosine of 2 times 0. Cos cosine of 0 is 1. Then we do double prime at 0. That would be negative sine of 2 times 0, which would be 0. And that would be 0. Then we do the third order derivative. Oops, I forgot to kick out the 2. Uh, that's embarrassing. That should be a 2 there. Yeah. And then this is going to kick out a negative 4, right? But that's 0. This is going to be a negative 8 cosine value at 0, which should be negative 8. And at, at the fourth order derivative, that's going to be um, positive oops, positive 16 sine value of 0, which would just be uh, 0. And then we'll do one more here, fifth order derivative. That would be negative 32 cosine of 0, which would be uh, negative 32. So, right now, what we have is this is n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and n equals 5. And that corresponds to this guy here, n running from um, 0 to infinity of f, the nth order derivative divided at c, x to the nth power all over n factorial. Okay. So, um, then the next thing I do is notice that this is 2, whoops, sorry. This is 2 to the first power. This is negative 1 times 2 to the third power. And this is negative 1. Uh-oh, did I do that wrong? See, that was sine, that would be cosine, that would be negative sine, that would be negative cosine, that would be positive sine. Oh, that wouldn't be negative, yeah, okay. That should not have been negative 32. That would have been a 32. We just take the derivative sign. Yeah. Okay, so this would be... Um, 2 to the 5th power. So, um, so the problem is that these, these are matching up nicely, but, um, but your, uh, but the zeros are being canceled out here. So, I mean, so in other words, you're missing some terms here. So this is hard to, I think this is an especially hard thing to see. So let's try to um, think about it. So based on this um, format, we're saying that, that this is 0 when, it, when n is 0. So that means we would have 0 times x to the 0 over 0 factorial. That would be my, my initial term. Then the next term, when n equals 1, that would be um, 2 times x to the first all over um, 1 factorial. The next term would be 0 times 
x to the second all over 2 factorial. And then we'd have um, negative 8 times x to the third all over 3 factorial. And then we'd have 0 times x to the fourth all over 4 factorial. And then we'd have um, 32 times x to the fifth all over 5 factorial. So what we're going to try to do is renumber the ends and make it, you know, we still want n to run from 0 to infinity. And um, we need to somehow illustrate what's going on here. So um, the initial term here, this is just going to be 1. Because x is 0, power is 1. Oh, no, it's times 0. This actually will be 0. So that we don't want that term. We want this to be the first term. Um, so we could make this the initial term. So then what we need to, so if we call this the initial term, so we'll let n equals 0 here. And that means this would be n equals 1. And that means this would be n equals 2, because that's the only way we can get these zeros to disappear. Because we don't want, uh, we only want this guy, this guy, this guy. So we want this to be our initial term, that to be a first term, that to be our second term. So now that we do that, we can process, we can rewrite this because what we notice is this is one when that's one when that's two. So, but it's two to the first, right? So, um, and this is, this is negative one times two to the third. And this is 2 to the 5th. So you notice that when n is 0, all these guys are 1. When n is 1, all these guys are 3. And when n is 2, all these guys are 5. So there's a fairly easy way to do that. What we're going to do is do 2 to the 2n plus 1 um, times x to the 2n plus 1 over... 2n plus 1 factorial. That way when I plug in a 0 here, when I plug in a 0 for n, I get 2 to the first, x to the first, and 1 factorial. When I plug in 1 in here, notice that 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, so this would be 2 to the third, x to the third, and 3 factorial. And when I plug a 2 in there, I get 2 to the fifth, x to the fifth, and 5 factorial. Um, and that is, that is, that affects, has the effect of giving me just the terms I want. Okay, so that's the from scratch version. So now the, the other way to do this is to say, okay, I want to know what sine of 2x is as a McLaren series. So that's centered at zero. But I already know that sine of x is equal to the summation in running, oops, in running from zero to infinity. And that's negative one. Oh, I forgot about the negative one up here. This should be negative one to the, we want it to be positive there. So that would be negative one to the um, n. Yeah, that'd work. Negative one to the n because that would be positive, negative, positive, yeah. So we already know that sine of x is negative one to the n, and this is on your sheet, um, times x to the 2n plus one all over 2n plus one factorial. So since um, sine of x is that, and this is very similar to sine of x, in fact, the difference is that in the box, we have a 2x instead of x. So what I'm going to do is go to this, um, this uh, the Taylor, the McLaren's uh, version of sine x and say, well, that box is right here. So what if I just replace that box with, instead of x, 2x? So the suggestion is that that's going to be equal to the original um, McLaren series for sine, but in here I'm going to have a 2x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. Um, and notice if we simplify this, or actually um, I guess we're not simplifying, we're 
getting the numbers out, to kind of turning the numbers into a coefficient. We're going to have negative 1 to the n. We're going to have a 2 to the 2n plus 1. And we're going to have an x to the 2n plus 1. And all that's going to be over 2n plus 1 factorial. And so we get the same result as we did up there, um, except for it's a little bit of a quicker uh, move. And um, we didn't have to go through all that um, finding derivatives. Now, of course, this only works if we have ones that we already know. Um, let me show you another quick example using the known series. So let's say we want to take a slightly more complicated function like this, x to the third, um, e to the 2x, or something like that. Okay, So this is fairly involved. So, and what we do know is that e to the x, written as a Maclaurin series, and we'll say centered at 0 again, centered at 0, e to the x is equal to the summation n running from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So that's the known e to the x. Uh, now the cool thing is that we can, um, because we're multiplying here, we could, you know, just write that part as a Taylor series and then we multiply it by x cubed because it, of the distributive property. We know that the Taylor series is going to be just a long polynomial, so we can always multiply it by a monomial. So we're going to focus on the e to the 2x first. So let's say, what would e to the 2x be? Well, it would be just like e to the x, except for in place of x, we're going to have a 2x. So you could see that this would be n equals 0 to infinity of um, 2x to the n for n factorial. And of course, you could rewrite that as 2 to the n times x to the n over n factorial. But then we also have this x cubed out here, so if we wanted to write this as a Maclaurin series, aka Taylor series that's centered at zero, then we would take we would take this guy, the one we just wrote, 2x to the n, oops, 2 to the n, x to the n, n factorial, n running from zero to infinity, and we just multiply it by x cubed, because that's what we're doing out here. We're multiplying that by x cubed. Um, and then if we distribute that through, we get n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n, x to the n plus 3, because I'm just multiplying x cubed on x to the n, and on the bottom I have n factorial. That would be my um, clearance series for this function. Now you can see, if we want to do this one from scratch, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can see that might be a little bit challenging. Okay, zero would be what? That would be zero. F single prime would be three x squared uh, e to the two x plus x cubed, or 2x cubed, e to the 2x, and then if we evaluate that at 0, we get, um, well, we still get 0, don't we? Uh, and if we do it one more time, we get, uh, let's see, that would be, if we take the of this, that would be 2 times 3 is 6x, times e to the 2x plus 3x squared. Actually, it would be 6x squared, wouldn't it? Um, e to the 2x plus um, yeah, that would be 6x squared e to the 2x plus 2x cubed Actually, that'd be 4x cubed. E to, the, e to the 2x. And if we evaluate that, and I think I've done enough now, you can see this could get really tedious. Now let's see, is any of these not zero? 
Nope. They're all still zero. But I think if we do one more, you'll see some non-zero terms start showing up. But you can see that the first, yeah, the first three terms are zero. And that's why the x to the n plus 3, that's why, you know, that makes sense that this, the first x would be um, to, the, to the third power, because when we plug in 0 for n, we get x to the third. So my first, my first one is going to start right here. The first term, because the rest of them are all 0. You can see this is the first one that's going to not have an x in it, so this would be what, 6 e to the 2x plus um, 12x e to the 2x. And all this stuff. But anyway, so you get the idea that this would, this would be a tedious project to get the same result. In fact, it might be a good exercise for you going through this, keeping track of all your um, product roles and adding things together and so forth. So um, I'll leave that for you guys to think about. Okay, so that's creating Taylor's, or in this case, McLaren's series from um, using a known or a given Taylor series that we already know.